Greetings, Earthlings. So apparently a lot of people are interested in my Holy Grail War Mini game. So I figured I'll give you a bit of a progress update. I've done a lot of cool stuff. I've made a lot of progress. If you guys were interested in commands, I will also get the end of the video into how I made this cool system. I haven't really seen anywhere else. What have I done so far? I rebuilt the entire data pack. Not the, as good as it could have been. It could just run better now. A couple of cool bullet point changes. Data pack no longer kills all items. Now abilities actually have a cooldown. Can't just spam one ability over and over. I have reworked how chest loot work. Now instead of chest mine carts that are spread players around the map, there are physical chests on the maps that have marker entity. The game knows what loot tables to put. This should give you a lot more reason to go inside. I've completely overhauled how masters work. Don't worry about that too much right now. I know, I know. What servants have I gotten done? Well, out of the 14 servants, I have finished the coding for eight of them. It means that there are eight servants currently, six more to go. I'm about halfway done with Rider of Black. I'll give you a quick sneak peek of a couple of them. This guy from my YouTube comment section. Here's a sneak peek of Mordred. Everyone has armor trims now. A little bit of her kit. Uh, she has mana burst. Has reveal pedigree. Dispels her disguise by removing her helmet. Basically it removes some of her defense while increasing her offense and it buffs all of her abilities. Mana burst is more powerful while active. Also buffs her third ability, Crimson Lightning. Strikes people with a lot of lightning. Also added variable charge rates for all the noble phantasms, and it is no longer tied to the damage you deal. It's just a straight cooldown, I guess warm up. But Gilgamesh can actually get his ult sometimes. Here, speaking of ult, here is Richard's noble phantasm, Clarent Blood Arthur. I'm working on it. William Shakespeare. All he can do. Annoy people. Run away. Ah. This is what you're really looking for, your ability Enchant. As, as a true Shakespeare, you must write... Uh, enchant. Enchant's weapon armor gives them extra benefits. Wow. I really need to balance that. But it will put the name that you put in the book as the name of the weapon. Self-preservation is pretty straightforward. You have to do is sign the book. It makes a really loud sound, and a bunch of particles. Can you stop now? Anyway, it makes a really loud sound and a bunch of particles to hopefully distract your opponent. They can run away. Write the name of a player. Say, for example, famous YouTuber Green. Find this title of... That's the opponent you want to target. Now there is a guy on him with Green's head going to constantly throw Shakespearean insults at him in the chat. Zombie, as long as it's near him, will give him weakness and drain his mana. Now let me show you Shakespeare's Noble Phantasm. First folio. This one is similar to the globe player. You can type multiple names. And we'll toss in some someone from a different side of each. Toss in. And then if we sign this on myself. Oh, this is currently what it does. Sends you into the Globe Theater. Work, work in progress, by the way. And in here, nothing happened. You're just in here. You guys will taunt you and drain your mana and stuff. Every 30 seconds. Is after one minute, you'll get teleported back. Can't really affect the outside world while you're inside the Globe Theater. So, it's kind, kind of just a banishment spell. It's... Ooh... Hey, there's a real zombie in there somewhere. Ow, that's kind of funny. Oh, there we go. Alright, back out. It always puts you out right where you went in. Theoretically. Alright, enough of Shakespeare. Let's finish this. Oh, look at that. It's 1.8. And currently my favorite character that I've added, Adelanta. Starts off. With 30 arrows, and she doesn't get arrows like Emia did. Has the scavenger arrows on the map, and she gets the arrow recipe. As you can see, Adelanta is very fast. She has the ability Beast Senses, 
This ability doesn't work very well with shaders. The darkness also gives people hear you glowing kind of on that same pulsation. You have the ability crossing arcade. Probably my favorite ability. Teleport forward. Just really fun to use. Especially in conjunction with the kit. Also has Bow of Heaven. It's just a great casting. Very, very simple kit, but very fun. This also does. There it is. Double paint has an astrophy arrow, and when you fire it into the ground, a bunch of arrows. I'm still working on that one. Alright, let me go through Masters a little bit. Buy more max health, buy max mana, gain more mana every time you do. Spells area, magic blast, buy magic blast points, you get up to however many you want. Then you walk over this pressure plate here. <clears throat> Then you can open the book and spend your points on different aspects of the ability. Every point you put into L Focus counted against your cooldown for that ability. Every point that you leave unspent counts towards it. Alright, now I've got my loadout done, I've got it all picked out. Save my loadout so I can use it again. Click this button. You can't save a loadout with a space in it. But if you save this a blast, you click sign and close on the book. If you want to regain your loadout, you come over to here, type the name of your loadout blast, and there you go. You have all your stuff back, spells are at the same points, you even have the leftover paper. So if you wanted to use a different loadout, for example, my loadout called I did that I made before this video sneakily. There we go. Oh, look at that. Of course, if you want to go back blast, here we go. We're back to blast. Probably the slickest system I've ever done. And the coolest part is that it's not specific to players, it's specific to the world. So if... Hey, what did you go? And I said, oh, I went blast. And I said, oh, save. oh, don't type in a save. That is the one downside, is you, you can do a little trolling. Uh, trust your friends, please. If you go, has loaded blast for him, too. Now we are the same... Yes. If this guy wants to go, um, I did. Then, bada bing, he is undecided. <clears throat> Back to the main event. One limitation is that you can't use nameless spaces. Uh, second limitation is that it doesn't copy your entire inventory. Second and a half is that that includes your armor and your offhand. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why that is in the tutorial part if you want to stick around for that. Real quick, I'll, sh I'll show you Magic Blast. It, uh, oh, I, it blasts. Look at that. So. Oh. If you're a hardcore command guy and you want to see the loadout system, huh? Well, let me show you how I did it. Alright, so first a real quick recap on what it does for you guys who didn't watch the actual video. Uh, basically, you walk into here, got your full inventory, you've got your scores and everything. Sign it with diamond as the title name. Find the book. Link later. It is saved. Come over here, get a book, and find it as blast as... I am in. Get all your all the stuff back from whatever matches what you typed. So now, dig into some of this code. Welcome to Visual Studio Code. Let's start with the high level. How does it work? Look, the basic overview is that it saves a bunch of stuff into storage and loads it back out. How does it save and load a whole loadout? Well, let me tell you, it's it's a it's a it's a trip. Okay, first you copy from title of the book you're holding, use the loadout name, master loadout's name, loadout.name, save some positions, your positions, specifically your X and your Z, these loadout.position, it sets this block here to barrel, by the way, call copy loadout, kind of how it works, bot to do the barrel, it summons a marker that you teleport back to, reds players in a thousand blocks, then in order to allow the area you're in to load in, wait 10 ticks, and do loadout corrector, also adds the tag saving to you, then this execute as the person with the tag saving, well then it does all this stuff, then it sets the block at negative 64 and you're through a barrel. Uh, this is going to be under the world, very bottom of the world, in my implementation of it I'm never going to have anything down there, so it's exclusively for barrels, no one's ever going to see it. Then it runs two functions. Copy scores, 
copy inventory with the storage of master loadout's loadout as dot name and dot number dot position x dot position as data in it okay copy scores copies in the master loadouts if the macro in use of the name variables that you set back here in the storage but it'll just replace this in here whatever you put name of it and that's why if you put a space it'll just break because it'll invalid command there so it goes through and for every ability every score it gets your score and it saves the result into the appropriate storage maybe this isn't the best way to do it maybe there's a better way then it stores your position in namespace position copy scores is simple enough i got that done pretty fast it's Copy inventory is a whole different canary. Item replaces block. That's wherever you are. This container dot number, that's what we saved from. So it sets it to zero to start with, and then that'll just go up. We, we just increment that and then loop. That's all it does. Just increments through your inventory and saves it at that position. The, co the copy inventory. No big beat, really going on here. 26. Barrel has 27 slots. Anyway, copy loadout, simple enough. Paste loadout is where it really gets all paste loadout. It saves the title into loadout.name. Loadout it adds the tag of loading, and it calls paste loadout gum. You can't just spread players you. You have to teleport you. Well, you have to first name of the loadout, get the position, Store that into master loadout loadout. It just teleports you out, teleports you to that position that's saved in the specific names. That's all that this does. Complex chain to teleport you to position that we saved. And it does the same thing where it schedules the functions that load in the area that you just it does the same thing where it corrects by going back of loading. We put loadout.name back in there. So the actual paste loadout function looks a little bit simpler than the copy first. It gets the positions and stores them into the position. Gets the name, stores it in, and it stores CD1, or that's basically just garbage school on the loadout dot number. Loadout, it runs this. So it does container dot number. Again, this this just an increment. Now we have the extra step of having to get rather than setting them, get the name and that's about all it is. Then paste scores, easy as pie, do the opposite, store the result in the score. Again, just a lot of grunt work. Probably the coolest part is custom space by the user. There's probably some memory hack, and then it just removes the tag loading from, teleports you back to the marker. Well, that's everything in the update. So much for watching, and I do have a little bit of an announcement that I've snuck in at the end of the video. <laughs> I'm working on a public Discord server. If you really want to join a Discord server, where you might be able to play this with other people, send me an email at this mail address that I'm showing on screen right now. Alright, well, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Add you see your deeds.